Hello everyone. In this set of videos, we'll be discussing uh, more about transistors. So before even entering into the world of transistors, let us try to understand why do we even want to look into it. Okay. So if you open any of the uh, modern day devices like CD players, hard disk, pen drives, laptops, any one of them, you see a square box that is sitting over there with some pins which is surrounded by it. By it. So that is what we call it, call it as a chip. So here's the point where everything comes on, where, where, the, where the word transistor comes on. Let us try to find out a relation between this chip and the transistors. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll open up this particular chip and see what is there inside it. So for example, this chip will have some gates. It will have some logic gates. It could be a, it could be a NAND gate, a NOR gate, an AND gate or any, anything, anything. It could be anything. So these gates are connected in such a fashion to achieve the desired functionality. So this is what you see when you open up a, when you open up a chip. This is the real thing that you the real circuit that you see when you open up a chip. So now these are the abstract level behaviors of something else. So let us try to first open up any one of the gates first. When you open up the gates, for example, let's say we will take the gate A5. If you open up that one, it's nothing but it's made up of it may it's made up of CMOS inverters. This is what we call it as a CMOS inverter. We'll be getting into details of that. So let's not worry about that at this point of time. So this consists of a bunch of PMOS transistors at the top and NMOS transistors at the bottom. And this is how you achieve the functionality of a CMOS inverter. And there is a reason behind behind this structure of the CMOS inverter. We'll be getting into that in some time from now. Let's not worry about that. So let's try to understand what is there inside a chip and why do we even want to look into transistors? So here's where, where it comes from. So when, when once you open up a gate over here, a gate which is a, let's say A5, it has got a bunch of PMOS transistors at the top and a bunch of NMOS transistors at the bottom. So using some combinations of PMOS and NMOS transistors, using some connections, connectivity features of PMOS and NMOS transistors, you build up, a, you, you come up with a NAND gate. Similarly, similar, uh, similar or a similar fashion structure will be present for a AND gate or a NOR gate or any of the gates that you see. So, so, so here the word transistors come from. And this is what you see is the symbol of transistors. When you actually expand the transistors, this is what you see. So this is what you see. You have a, you have the source terminal, you have the drain terminal, you have the gate terminal, you have the body terminal, you have the substrate, you have N plus, you have N plus doping over here and so on. So you, this is what you actually see. So any any modifications of the electrical characteristics of this NMOS transistors will eventually go and affect the functionality of the chip. So now you understand the relation that why do we even want to need, why there is a need to learn the word transistors. So that's why we start from this point and eventually we end up building a chip. So if you try to tune up this particular transistors in a very in, in, a, in a fashion which is which is working you find that your chip will be working. Any failure in any one of the transistors out of the billion transistors that are present in, on a chip, any failure in one of the transistors in one of the electrical characteristics of the transistors will, will eventually turn, will, will eventually fail your chip. So that's how important a transistor is. So the one who is building the chip, he needs to know a lot about these transistors if he understands the functionality of the transistors very well. So for switching from this point till this point will not be a big deal. Okay, so let us try to let us try to understand it is understand this particular transistor from scratch. Let's see. So we have taken the N channel MOSFET transistor. We have taken the N MOS uh, transistors for our illustration, and 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 we and the inverse and the inverse uh, explanation for the N MOS is true for P MOS. So let's uh, uh, try to understand what N MOS is, and let's try to learn it from scratch. And by scratch, I mean from the number of terminals that it has. It has got four number of terminals, and also we'll start from a box. A box is like we will uh, we'll call it as a box. We will call it as a P type box over here under which we'll, we are going to build the transistors. Okay. So this P type box is called as a P type substrate. So how, how do we obtain this particular P type substrate? It's just a piece of silicon in which we doped in which, in which we dope uh, P type metals, basically in which we insert more and more P type materials. So this is how you become, this is how it becomes a P type substrate. It's as simple as that. So these are more of the fabrication terms that uh, that uh, uh, we'll be using, but we'll be not learning uh, detail about the fabrication terms. But yeah, P-type substrate is nothing but a piece of silicon which has got a lot of P-type materials in it. It's as simple as that. Okay, so you start with the P-type substrate, and then next what you do, you, you create some isolation region at these sides. 
so this is this this bulk of uh, silicon dioxide is nothing but uh, isolation it acts as an isolation region and why it, and why we call it as isolation region the reason is in this in the center point that you see in this area this is the area where we will be building the transistors and this this particular transistor will be isolated from the other transistors using this blocks of silicon dioxide they could be connected this transistors could be connected to the other transistors via some wires over here via some metal connectivity over here but they would not be physically connected fr from this transistor to this transistor there will be there will be uh, some isolation that will be present across adjacent transistors so that is the reason you have this isolation regions over here and this is the, this is the area that we call it is an active area so this is the area where we are actually going to build our transistors okay so now what we'll do is when we when we say about n mos it's nothing but n channel mosfet transistors so basically we have to create an n channel so let's see how do we do it so next you do it you diffuse n plus dopants or what you say what you call it as n plus impurities inside the p type substrate in this fashion you in the in the in this small area and in this particular small area you dope it you diffuse n type n plus uh, type impurities over here and by while maintaining a small piece of gap over here so why how do we maintain this particular gap there are some lithography techniques that we do it so that's uh, again a fabrication technology that we have to look into but there are ways to control to control the diffusion of this particular dopants inside the p-type substrate in this area so we can we, there, there are methods where we can stop the do, uh, stop the impurities from entering this area and allowing the impurities only entering into this areas so this is how we get this particular n plus and n plus kind of diffusion region okay next what we do is over the at the center at the at the center area where we have kept some we have, where we have kept some open space we build the gate over here we will we build the gate oxide over here we actually grow a gate oxide over here and this oxide will act as an oxidation or as an isolation element between the gate which is present over here which will be a metal gate and the substrate so when we say when we say nmos it's n channel m metal oxide semiconductor so this is where the name comes from it's this is the metal this is the oxide and this is semiconductor so it's metal oxide semiconductor and there are reasons why we do it so uh, those are device physics related reasons which will we will be not be covering in this re in this particular section but in some other sets so this is where the name comes from this is metal oxide semiconductor and we have this n plus n plus source and range so this uh, this n channel will be created between the n plus n plus source and n plus drain somewhere in between so we'll be we'll be coming into those things so let's not worry about those terms right away okay so this is how you build the uh, n plus uh, a diffusion area and you have the gate oxide over here and you have the gate over here basically a metal gate so now let us try to build the terminals so we so this particular terminal will be called as gate this one will be calling as source and this particular terminal will be calling as drain usually when we draw a transistors on a on paper you see there are only three terminals but in in reality there is a fourth terminal that is present which we call it as body which is present over here and there are and this particular terminal affects the electrical characteristics of the mosfet we'll be looking into how we'll be looking into how does it affects the electrical characteristics but we should always remember that there is one more terminal which is sitting over there and that we call it as body so uh, since i'm running out of time I'll, I'll let me stop over here in the next video we'll be looking into uh, we'll be connecting uh, the source gate drain to some potentials and we'll be looking into uh, uh, some electrical behavior of this particular mosfet so let us try to let us try to stop over here and let us try to continue from that point in the next video thank you